This is the Lock Ultimate, and this is a video about the features and why you might consider this as your next rocket. Pelican flying is Lock Ultimate. It is a four cluster F 28 red line, four red lines. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Uh, this is the Lock Ultimate. Now, it's an older kit. It's been around for over 10 years, probably decades. I'm not exactly sure when it came out. And it has kind of slipped under the radar. and Nobody knows too much about it because what they do know about it is here at the back end. Uh, as you can see, this is a seven engine cluster. And this scares people. And so people don't particularly want to buy it. but this is a really cool kit because you don't have to fly with all seven motors. You could fly with one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Any combination of those, which makes it a really versatile rocket. Now, I don't know how much they uh, effort they put into creating this rocket, but there's a couple of little cool little features that I really like. Um, now, all the motor tubes in here aren't the same length. Four of them are shorter, so they come up to about right here on the rocket. And then the other three come up to around here. And I have a little image of what this looks like when you're building it, and this is what you'll see. And so when you open up the rocket, by the way, it has this huge 42-inch parachute. And another thing that I like is it's got a really long shock cord. Um, you can never have a shock cord that's long enough because uh, that kind of helps present, prevent zippering. I know that uh, Locke has upgraded this kit and this has put in this, this nice shock cord. Um, but if you look here on the inside of the rocket, you can see the three motor tubes that come up to the front. Now I covered this in another video. Um, if you want to fly with one motor, uh, you want to use just the central motor, but because of that, because there's three tubes that are open to the top, what would happen is the ejection charge would go off and it would come out these other two. Uh, instead of coming out the front, what would happen is the pressure would pressurize it and all the pressure would come out those open holes in the back. So you got to plug them. And in my video that I did, I showed you how to make these little plugs and you can just take a plug and put it into the hole like this. You can see now I've plugged that hole and you do, you, you create two of them and you put this one in the other hole and that way you can fly with just one motor. Now if you want to fly with two motors what you do is you plug the center one and then you put your two motors in the outside holes like that. Uh, and you can see what I did here. I don't know if you can see this, but let me turn it around here. But I've, on the back end, I've put black marker on the two tubes that I know are the ones that go all the way through. So that way, if I'm looking at the back, I can tell exactly which ones I want to put um, the motors in. Um, if you want to fly three motors, what you do is you just do all three across. And if you want to fly four, you plug the center and you do this one and this one. Oops, that one. Like this. So now this is the one that goes across. And then you use these other two. Um, if you want to do five, um, you do the, the three across. So you do the three, and then you do that one like that, just like a five. If you want to do six, you plug the center, and you do all six around the outside. And if you want to do seven, of course, you just use all seven. Now, let me talk about the, the downside of this kit, which I think, I wish there would have been some changes when they designed this. Um, first of all, 
The kit comes with a launch lug for a quarter inch launch rod. Now this is a big rocket. I would never fly a big rocket like this on a quarter inch launch pad. You need to put rail buttons on it so you can fly it off a rail. But because of the motor arrangement here, there's not enough room for the stud in the rail button to go all the way through the tube because then it's going to get into these motor tubes so you can't do that so what I would recommend is you get a couple of the rail guides and we sell these here at Apogee Components you know, they're the universal rail guides or you could get the four inch conformal rail guides they would fit well on this kit so that's one of the things I would change the other thing that I would change is on the back these motors they interfere with each other you see how they don't fit in properly because the ring on the back are connecting with the ring on, on, the, on the one adjacent to it. So what you need to do is to sand off the edge of the stop that's on the rear of the ring. And when you sand, just sand into the, the ring itself, not into the casing. And if I flip it over here, you can see on this one here, I actually sanded too far. So now this is probably a bad motor because this is now a weak spot. Um, you don't want to get into the casing itself. Um, but when you, when you sand off the ring, now you can orient it so that the motors fit really nice inside the tube. Now if you're building the tube from, uh, from scratch, what you can, can do is to put spacers between the tubes to separate them just a little bit and it's not going to take much probably less than a sixteenth of an inch and that will give you room to get all the motors in without them interfering on their uh, stops on the back um, the other thing that you'll need to consider is how to restrain the motors um, what I would do is put all thread rods and just hang it out the back probably a half of an inch and you want to go every other one. So this motor here, this one here, and then this one here. And that way you can put a washer on it and a nut, and that will hold them all in, all six of them in. Um, the way I built this here right now, I'm going to have to friction fit the motors in, um, which is not the best thing to do, but for this rocket, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to fly it like that. Um, I also made the bottom flush. Uh, and the reason I did that instead of recessing it, the centering ring in, is because th when you're flying a cluster, there's so much heat back there that uh, this back end gets kind of scorched. And if it's recessed in there, now it gives you an extra pocket to kind of contain that heat. So I want to get the heat away from the rocket as quickly as possible without, you know, torching the bottom. And when you launch this off a launch pad, make sure that the motors are well away from the blast deflector. Um, so you don't get reflected heat coming back up on the bottom of the rocket because it's going to get really hot when you fly a cluster. Um, let's see, what else would I change? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. <laughs> this is a great kit. Um, again, it's called the Lock Ultimate. Um, it doesn't come with decals, uh, but it's a pretty simple paint scheme. You can order decals separately from other vendors, um, or you can paint them on yourself or create your own, which is even better. Um, it comes, you can get it here at Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. Again, my name is Tim Van Milgen, and thank you for coming.